we're going to look at two sample hypotheses. Two sample hypotheses. Okay. Two sample hypotheses. And in a two sample hypothesis, we are going to specifically look at paired t test. Paired t test. Paired t test. I'm sure you can see it on the screen. Now, before we do that, I want to tell you the difference between a parametric test and a non parametric test. There are two main differences between a parametric and non parametric test. Okay, now watch. Parametric tests deals with the data set being normally distributed. Okay, so the data set for a parametric test is normally distributed. It's normally. It again. The data set is normally distributed. And for non parametric test, the data set is not normally distributed. It's not normally distributed. Sometimes we say it is skewed. It is skewed. What is a sample? If I collect the ages of the people in this class, that is a sample. But that is one sample. If I collect the ages, of people in this class, and I collect the ages of people in group two, that is two different samples, okay? That, that's what I mean by two different samples. But if I collect the scores, your scores in this class, and I also collect your scores in management science, that is two different samples, but the people are the same. The subjects are the same. I'll come back to that. The subjects are dependent. Okay, so the sample, the subject is the same, and so the sample is dependent. But first, one difference between parametric and non-parametric is that parametric is normal, non-parametric is not normal. Another thing is that parametric deals with the mean. Parametric usually deals with the mean. Non-parametric usually deals with the median. So these are the two main differences between parametric and non-parametric. Now, what do we mean by dependent and independent sample? Dependent and independent sample. Okay. Now, dependent sample is a sample where the subjects are the same. The subjects are the same. The subjects are the people or the companies or the cars you are dealing with. Okay. The subjects are the same. Dependent sample is also called paired sample. And therefore, the test we use is called paired t test. Independent sample is when the subjects are not the same. Independent sample is when the subjects are different. Okay. So, for example, independent sample is is looking at the ages of students in group one and then ages of students in group two. So these students are different subjects. So you look at ages of group one, ages of group two, okay? And whatever age you record here, they, they are two samples, all right, but the subjects are different people. So you have different subjects here and you also have different subjects there. But with paired is the same subject. So a typical example of paired sample is where you have a before and after. Today we are going to look at paired test, paired t-test. Okay. And because it's a t-test, it means that the sample is parametric. So when you look at the table here, paired t-test is a parametric test. And that's what we're gonna look at. That is all that we are gonna look at. And we are going to look at that using a typical example. I and mean, using that typical example, I will now be walking you through the process on how to do this. Please take a calculator, take a pen, take a book, work along with me. You are going to swim in statistical gymnastics. Okay, you are about to swim beautifully. So move along beautifully with me. You are going to hypothesize. So let me start by telling you what a hypothesis is. A hypothesis is a, it's a statement about a population parameter. It's a statement about a population parameter. Okay. 
the word population parameter is given by the sign called mu. Mu means me, okay? Mu means me. Now let me make it a very practical. There are two kinds of hypotheses. The first one is known as the null hypothesis. The second one is known as the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the authoritative statement about a population parameter. It is the authoritative statement about a population parameter. And guess what? You can make a statement. And this time I want you to type the answers in the chat rather, okay? There can be a statement by the electoral commission. And the statement is, NDC will win the next election. And then Obodai Melody says, NDC will lose the next election. Which of these statements will shake the nation? The one by Melody or the one by EC? Type it up for me. Which of these will shake the nation? The one by Melody or the one by EC? The EC one. Why? Because the EC has an authority in that statement. Okay. Now, the one by Melody is a joke. Now, let's say that, let's say that Benis says that all students in this group will have A in research methods. And then, Dr. KOA, I say that all students in this group will have A in research methods. Which of them two statements will you believe? The one by Benis or the one by me? The one by me, because that's an authoritative statement. Please, I, I haven't said that though. <laughs> I haven't said that. I'm just making a hypothetical statement before somebody goes to sleep. So the null hypothesis is authoritative. The alternative hypothesis is the mirror image of the null hypothesis, is the one that counteracts you know, the null hypothesis. Is a mirror image of the now. Okay, so that is alternative hypothesis. Now, how you understand each one of them and use them, we shall get that there very soon. But for now, let's write the steps in hypothesis. Steps in hypothesis testing. These steps are what you are going to use throughout. Step one. The step one is to formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis. That is step one. Formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis. That's step one. Step two. Step two. Step two is to compute the test statistic and the critical value. Compute the test statistic. Okay. And here we are going to use T test. Compute the test statistics and the critical value. And the critical value. Step three, find the p value and alpha. Find the p value and alpha. Alpha is a level of significance. Find the p value and alpha. And alpha is the level of significance. Step four. Decide and conclude. Decide and conclude statistically and practically. Decide and conclude statistically and practically. Decide and conclude statistically and practically. Okay. So these are the steps in hypothesis testing. Okay. Of course, when you have a question, you can raise your hand at any time and I'll address it. These steps, we are going to take them one by one and then discuss them. Okay. So I'm going to explain the first step and then we shall now apply it to our story. Formulating the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay. How do you do that? Well, before I show you that, you have to understand some few things here. The word, there are some key words that you learn probably in management science. One of them is equal to, the other, the opposite of equal to is what? Type me the answer. What is the opposite of equal to? What is the opposite of equal to? Or oh, you can raise your hand. If you have an answer, you can raise your hand. You can type. What is the opposite of equal to? Let me see some of them. Not equal to, that one is easy. Okay, so that one you can type, not equal to. Now what is the opposite of less than? 
What is the opposite of less than? Some of you are sending me the messages privately. Now you have to send it to the page. What is the opposite of less than? Less than. Okay. Somebody says greater than. That is wrong. All of you writing greater than, that is wrong. It means that you didn't really do well in management science. Opposite of less than is greater or equal to. Okay. Opposite of less than is greater or equal to. Because if you say that somebody is less than 30, it's opposite to be the person being greater or equal to 30. If you say somebody is less than 30, the person cannot be 30. So it's opposite, mathematically, statistically speaking, is that a person is greater or equal to 30. So please note. Opposite of greater than is also less or equal to. Keep that in mind. But there are some English words that can refer to these symbols. So let me give you an example. If I use an English word which is below, which of this symbol will it refer to below? Below. What symbol is that? Less than. Very good. If I use words like um, not above, not above. What symbol are we talking about here? Be careful. Not above. Not above. Not above. Don't deal with the not. Deal with above. And then, and then do the opposite of the above. That will give you the not. So what is the opposite of not above? Exactly. That is less or equal to. Okay. Below is less than. Not above is less or equal to. What is the opposite of at least? At least. Sorry, what is a symbol for at least? That's what I mean. What is a symbol for at least? Write some. Write some. Write some. What is a symbol for at least? Greater than or equal to. That's the right answer. Greater than or equal to. What is the opposite for not at most? Not at most. What's the opposite for not at most? Not at most. Not at most. What is the opposite? Not at most. Nanaimchi, that is wrong. Not at most. Margaret, that is wrong. Not at most. Eric Cote, that is wrong. Not at most. MFA, that is wrong. Not at most. Not at most is less than. Don't deal with the not. First, deal with at most. What is at most? What is at most? At most is less or equal to, that is at most. And then you ask yourself, what is the opposite of that? The opposite of less or equal to, oh, sorry, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on. Not at most is greater than, okay? Not at most is greater than, okay? Because opposite, I mean, at most is less or equal to. At most is less or equal to. So it's opposite to be greater than. It's opposite to the data. Look, we've looked at this thing in management science a lot. So please take note. All of you writing less than, you didn't get it. At most is less or equal to. It's opposite to be greater than. At least is greater or equal to. It's opposite to be less than. So get, get to know this. Now let's go to step one in hypothesis testing by looking at a story. So here is a story. Assume you send your salesperson is known, you know, in most countries, it is said that some salespeople don't do well. It is said that customer is keen. If the customer is keen, then the customer must be treated well. But there are some salespeople in your company, they don't do well at all. They don't treat their customers very well. So there are a lot of customer complaints. And so what you decided to do as a manager is to send these salespeople to a workshop, a customer service training workshop. And you want to know whether the training has made a difference in the number of complaints. Now, the information you are seeing here is a number of complaints. Okay, what you see here is a number of complaints. So you have the number of complaints before going for the workshop. And the individuals are on the left here. These individuals are five people. The complaint before they went for the workshop are the before. The complaints after going for the workshop is the one on the right. And as a manager, you want to know whether the workshop has made a difference in the number of complaints. How do you do it? Well, first of all, you got to identify that this is a paired sample. Why is it paired? 
because the person on the left, salesperson, that same, same salesperson has got the before value and has got the after value. It's the same person. And that is what makes it per. That's what makes it per dependent. Okay. Now, we are about to do the first step in hypothesis testing. But before that, let me ask you some easy questions. Please look at the people in the list. Tell me, which of these people must have benefited the most from the workshop? Dennis. Dennis was asking me a question. I don't know. Yeah, Dennis, you called me. I'm sorry, I was mistake. All right, okay. Now, okay, raise your hand and tell me which of these people must have benefited the most. I want those of you who have an answer to raise your hand. Because this one, I want to seek your voice on something. Which of these people in the list must have benefited the most from the workshop? If you look at their complaints before and the complaints after. Okay. Um, 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 Mary Nomeshi. Mary, which of them? Then, okay, okay, I need to unmute you. Okay. So, Mary, I have unmuted you. Go ahead. Uh, let me go to Nana MG. Yeah, Mary. Okay, look, um, I will choose MH. MH, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. You've chosen yours. Um, all of you who agree with Mary, lower your hands. If you don't agree with her, keep your hand up. If you don't agree with her, keep your hand up. Um, let me go to Nana Sumen, since you don't agree with her. Nana Sumen, which, which one do you want to choose? Um, I would pick M.O. M.O. Nana Sumen has picked M.O. All those who agree with her, please lower your hands. Lower your hands. If you agree with her, lower your hands. Let's go to Nana Mchi. I will take TF. TF. Okay, Nananchi takes TF. All those who agree with him, lower your hand. Lower your hand. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I've been saying was the person who benefited the most is TF and not MO. Okay. That, why? Because TF had more complaint before and have been able to cut down the complaint from 20 to six. MO cut it down to zero, but that is all he had anyway. The effort MO may have put in to cut it down is just you know, a little. Now, on the basis of this, let me now ask you, how many more complaint reduction does TF have than MO? How many more complaint reduction does TF have more than MO? How many more complaint reduction does TF have more than MO? You raise your hand, and I know many of you are going to get this. You know. So just think, if you don't know, don't raise your hand. Don't write it. How many more complaints does TF have? But if you know, don't guess. Once your brain tells you that, let me guess. Because you must have done some calculation before you tell me the answer. How many more complaints does TF have more than MO? Let's go to um, Perpetual Abendaco. How many more? Okay, let me unmute you, Perpetual. Yeah, Perpetual, tell us. Dog is 10. It's 10, okay. Good guess, that's wrong. Let's go to um, Gifty. Gifty. I'm trying to unmute you. 16. 16. That's very wrong. That's very wrong. Yeah. Very wrong. You, you guys are guessing. I'm going to take just five more. Kelvin. Um, 3.5 or 350%. Perfect. Excellent. Beautiful. Oh, gosh. This is two months. I'm giving you that one solidly. That is it. Now, Kelvin, what I want you to do, because even though you have mentioned 3.5, I'm telling you, somebody is scratching his head here. The person is asking, Kelvin, what, what did he do? Kelvin, you are the creme de la creme of the class. You are the, you are the, you are the alpha of the class. So I want you now to explain to them 
how you were able to calculate that because there is no way that MO did better than TF. Why? Because, because for every one complaint reduction that MO will have, TF will have 3.5 more. Explain to them. Okay, so the amount of reduction TF had is uh, 40 and the reduction MO had is four. And for the percentage reduction, I divided the reduction of MO. I deducted the reduction of TF by the reduction of MO. So it's 14 over 4, which gave us 3.5. Excellent. Who doesn't get it? If you don't get it, there's no need to be shy about it. Who doesn't get it? Who doesn't get it? Perfect. So now we know that MO did well than everybody, and we have justified that. So we have to go ahead and now confirm some few things. Okay. We have to go ahead and confirm some few things. Yes, Kafi. Yes. Doc, why, why do you divide and not subtract rather? Subtract I what from what? I subtracted um, his, um, his difference to get 10. I got 10. Mention the name, what you are subtracting. But I'm saying, why wouldn't I rather subtract? Okay, so um, TF was what? 20. So I'm looking at TF's difference was 14. 20 minus 6, that's 14. And mm -hmm. then I, I subtracted it from MO, which was 4, to get the 10. But what I'm asking is, why don't I subtract instead of dividing? Okay. Because no, I took the four, the 4 out of the 14. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. Kelvin will tell you. This one is a very easy thing. So Calvin, just explain it to him. Okay, so the question was, what is the percentage difference or how much more, um, how much more was the difference between them? So because it's percentage difference, that is why you divide them rather than just subtract. Exactly, and besides, besides when you are subtracting, you are making a, what we call an additive guess. Okay. I want to use words like how much more, okay? The additive guess comes with the difference, like subtracting or adding. That is what you did first, subtracting or adding. However, after you've done the subtraction of six from 20 and the subtraction of zero, okay, from four, after that, it is a difference now between the two. Okay? It's a difference between the two. And the difference between them it's not just the difference. You're talking about percentage increase. Because at this stage, it's not how much more you have. It's how much more effort you have put in. Okay. It's a percentage difference. So two people can all have an amount. Okay. And when you put it in percentage difference, you will get to know how much more one has than the other in terms of difference. You don't have to subtract. The subtraction you did is the four minus zero. And the 20 minus six. That's what you did first. That is all you need. Felix. Okay, sir. So, so is it not for this same additive guess that we are thinking that perhaps M will did better because he had to perfect what he was doing, but then TF just had to be average? It well, we would have we would have thought that way, but the word you used was he had to perfect. But he had to perfect what? Because of what did he have? So let's give an example. What did you have? Let's say that we are all supposed to run from Legon to Accra. And you started the journey from Legon, but your friend started the journey in Accra, uh, sorry, in 37. And then your friend got to Accra, but you got to um, Rage Runabout, okay? Which of them two would you say did better? The one who did uh, longer kilometers. Exactly. So it is not because the other one completed the journey, but the one who did longer. So that is why you could not say that MO did well because MO didn't do longer. The gap is four. But then the gap for TF is very long. Effort is involved here. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll get along. You get it? Yes, yes, please. Okay. All right. So let's go to the hypothesis. We are going to formulate this hypothesis. Now, in order to formulate the hypothesis, there are two steps you have to take. 
and, and this is a, a constant step. You have to always have it like that. The first thing is that always write the mu. Okay. So you always write the mu. So you write mu one for the first sample, and then you write mu two for the second sample. Just as I've done. Then you write the mu one for the first sample again, and then mu two for the second sample again. That's all you do first. Because the samples are two. Then you are going to look for a symbol that will fall in between them. And the symbol must come from the sentence you have. So look at this whole thing. What word, what word is the symbol we are interested in? What word is the symbol? You can type the answer there. What word are we need, are we supposed to use to symbolize? When I say symbolize, I'm talking about less than greater than all of those things. You know, those those six symbols that we wrote, which word here? Reflect the symbol. Which word reflects the symbol? Let me see. The word is difference. The word is difference. Okay. Difference. Okay. So because the word is difference, you ask yourself, what symbol represents difference? Who can tell me? What symbol represents difference? What symbol? Type the symbol there. Oh, how can you say minus? Remember, we are talking about the symbol, the six symbols that I gave you. No, no, you can't say minus. Stop saying minus. What symbol? Okay, let me just show you the symbol. I don't want to mention the name because once I mention the name, you're going to get it. It means that you weren't following that much. Okay, so look here. Look here. Look there. Here. These are the symbols, six different symbols. Which of them represents difference? Which of the symbols, okay, less than, greater than or equal to, greater than, less than or equal to, not equal to, equal to, which of them represent difference? It's not equal to, okay, it's not equal to. Not equal to means difference. Okay. This again, we did it in management science. Anyway, so, but you know, okay, not equal to represent difference. The same represents equal to. So now you have to put the word not equal to in the middle of the first symbol. And then you ask yourself, what is the opposite of that symbol? What is the opposite of not equal to? And that is equal to. We are formulating now. We are formulating. Okay, so now we have the two. Then you bring a colon in front of each one of them. So you have a colon for this, and you have a colon for this. And now on the left side, you are going to indicate which one is the null hypothesis. And which one is alternative? And guess what? Put this down. The null hypothesis always has some level of equality in it. Put it down. The null hypothesis always has some level of equality in it. Okay. The null hypothesis, the H naught, always has some level of equality in it. The null hypothesis always has some level of equality in it. So the top one. And the down one, which one will be the null hypothesis? This, this functions I've written, the top and down, which one will be the null? Top or down? Um, top or down, top or down, top or down. That is easy. It's supposed to be the down one, excellent. Okay. The down one. So you now apply H naught for the down one. And then you give H A for the top one. Job done. Finish. Now you have been able to formulate the null hypothesis statistically. But what does it mean? What does it mean? Because you have to make sense of what you've written. What does what you've written mean? Well, if you look at this first, the bottom one, the null, the null is saying that there is no difference, there's no difference in the number of complaints in the mean number of complaints before and after the workshop. There is no difference in the mean number of complaints before and the mean number of complaints after. There is no difference. Now, why do I say there's no difference? Because if you move the mu two on the right-hand side to the left, you're going to get mu one, okay, minus mu two equal to zero. Okay, that's the meaning of there is no difference. So in other words, the difference is just zero. Now, what does that mean practically? What it means is that, so what the null is saying is that the workshop is not even good. 
Because the number of complaints before and the number of complaints after are the same. That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what the null is saying. That the number of complaints before is just the same as the number of complaints anyway. So it means that whatever the workshop was, after the workshop, it wasn't that good. That is what the null is saying. So the null is saying that the workshop is bogus. Okay. That practical meaning must be written down. The null is saying that the workshop is bogus. That's what the null is saying. That's a practical meaning of what we are doing here. Now we have to subject that to statistical torture to see whether truly the workshop is bogus. Now, of course, the alternative will be saying that the workshop is good. It's not bogus, it's fantastic because there's a, there's a, a difference. So that is the first step in hypothesis testing. Let's go to the second step. The second step in hypothesis testing says that calculate the test statistic. Okay, that's what it says. If you like, check what you wrote down. So you need to write a test statistic down. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a test statistic. The test statistic is given by T, which is a T test, equal to D bar divided by SD, which is a standard deviation, which is also divided by the square root of N. This is it, this is it. This is the test statistic, okay? Don't worry, in an exam situation, for example, you get this, you get a test statistic. So what does each of them mean? Well, before I tell you what each of them mean, let me tell you what the standard deviation means. The standard deviation is actually itself given by okay, the square root of summation d minus d bar all squared divided by n minus one. Please don't come and murder me, okay? I didn't formulate this okay? and I'm learning it and you're on to learn it. So what it's saying is that this is the summation d minus d bar, okay, to the power of two, all divided by square root of n, the square root of all that. So what does d mean? D means difference in the before and after. So D means difference. You have to remember that, the difference. D means difference. Now let me take you to the data set and watch something, watch something, just watch something. If you look at the data set, you have here complaint before and complaint after. Okay, that's what you have, complaint before, complaint after. And now when you look at a complaint before and complaint after, you will see that there is a before and then there's after. So what the difference here means is that you have to find the difference between each number for each person. So that means you have to create a table. So watch the table I'm gonna create. I'm gonna create this table. The table, I'll create a table for difference. And, and then I'll create a, the, a word called D bar. The D bar is going to be the mean of the difference. The mean of the difference, that's the D bar. Anytime you have something like X bar, J bar, D bar, this is the average, the mean. We'll create another column called D minus D bar. We'll also create another column called D minus D bar or square, just like in the formula. So ladies and gentlemen, what we are going to do right now together, you are going to calculate the difference for each value, okay, for each person. We're gonna create the difference. So if you go to the table, just look at the table. Type for me, what is it for CB? What is the difference between the before and then the after? What is the difference? Type that for me. That is two. There's no question about that. Okay. For TF, what is the difference between the 20 and the six? The 20 and the six. That is 14. Fantastic. So I want you to write your table do your column and also fill in all the columns. Okay, fill in all the columns. Okay, so I want you to get me the difference for the first one, which is two. The difference for the second one, which is 14. Continue the rest, continue the rest. When you finish, find the total and then find the mean and send me the mean privately. I'm assuming that you are working this independently without copying from any team or anybody. So do that and then tell me the mean. Tell me the mean. 
don't raise your hand. Just private chat me the name. I don't want you to put it in the main page because when you put it in the main page, somebody says, can we get the table? Which means that all along, you've not written the table. My dear, you have to write the table first before you do anything, okay? Write all the numbers in the table. Okay, write all the numbers in the table. Okay, so what, do that, and when you finish, when you finish finding the difference, okay, you now sum it to get the total. And then after summing it, okay, so Phoebe has sent me her final mean, Teofania, um, Kwejosare, Vincent, Joseph, all of them have given me correct means. All of them have sent me correct means. The rest of you be dirty with what we are doing. Jeffrey sent me correct me. Hannah sent me correct me. Okay. Deladem sent me correct me. You have to send me your correct me as well. You have to. Kelvin, Alfred, all of them have sent me correct me. Okay. So if you are to do this thing very correctly, you will know that this is two. The next one is 14. Okay. And then three minus two will give you one. And then zero minus zero will give you zero. And then four minus zero will give you four. When you sum all this, you'll get 21. So the summation of the D is 21. When you divide the 21 by the sample size N, which is five, it will be 21 divided by five. And the mean will be 4.2, 4.2. So the, the mean is 4.2. Now the next column, fill it. The next column says, take this difference and subtract the mean from it. So as an example, the first one is going to be two minus 4.2. That is what the first one will be. Two minus 4.2, that will be what? That will be two, negative 2.2, okay. That's the first one. Take each difference minus the mean and keep going, each difference minus a mean, each difference minus a mean. You want to do that, the second one will be negative 9.8. Keep going, keep going. And once you are done with it, privately send me all of them. Oh, sorry, the second one will be positive. It will not be negative. Okay. So the second one will be 9.8, 9.8. So send me all your answers at one go. And let me see. I say all your answers at one go, not one by one, no. Put it all together. Negative 2.2, comma, 9.8, comma. And then do all the others and send it to me. Do all the others. Fantastic. Jasmine is the first person to give me the perfect answer that I need. Okay. Now, Justin. Is the first person, Justin, your last one is, is wrong. Oh, okay, okay, it's not wrong, it's not wrong. Benjamin, Alfred, Afifa, Kafi, Grace, Edward, all of them are sending me correct answers, correct answers. So the third one is supposed to be negative 3.2, negative 3.2. Then the other one, last but one is negative, 4.2, because that is zero minus 4.2. And then the last one is supposed to be negative 0 0.2. So guys, this is it. The next column, you should square each answer you have. The next column, you are supposed to square each answer that you have. Now, if you are not following this fast, it means that you'll be behind. But that would also mean that you need to take your time and go through it all over again. So let's square each one. So you're going to square the negative 2.2. That would be 4.82. So when you square it, take your calculator, 4 point, okay. When you, when you square it, it's because it's negative, it's supposed to be plus. So you're going to get 4.84 That's the first one. When you square the second one, the third one, the fourth one, do that all and let me know. Do that. 
square each one of them and give it to me. Do that and give it to me. Oh, Felix has done some incredible work here. Felix, Alfred, Vincent, Redu, Kelvin. Okay, Kelvin, all of them have done some incredible, incredible outcome here. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Benjamin, your answers are wrong. Double check it. Stephanie, perfect answer from Stephanie. Perfect answer from Yasmin, Edward. Perfect answer from Edward. So the second one will be 96. Point eight three, okay. Then the third one will be ten point two four. Remember, all of them will be positive, okay. And then you continue seventeen point six four, and then the last one will be zero point zero four. So that's what you do. Then you add them. You add them. Look at the formula at the top. The formula says you should add them. So add all of them together. And tell me the answer. Margaret, you have a question? Ask your question. No, please. Um, the 9.8, when we squared, please, you said it's 90, 96.83. Mm -hmm. 96.04. Zero, oh, zero 06 is what I got. So I got. Yeah, it doesn't one. matter. Don't worry. There'll be some slight differences. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> all right. When you add all together, you should get approximately 128.8. Now, I say approximately, so it means that some of you will get, like, I like the answer Marian has given, 128.78. I love that. But that tells me that she's actually using calculator. If you are not using calculator and you are probably checking some of the answers from somewhere, you are rounding it quickly too much. Okay, once you do 128.8, it tells me that, hmm, I like the answer by Amma Deborah. It is 129.16. I like that because it is not exactly the 128.8. Okay. So sometimes you have to mention what you actually got on the calculator before you round it up. Benjamin's answer is also good. All right, so we have been able to get the answer in the standard deviation. Watch it. It is this one that we are calculating, SD, sigma D minus D by R to the power two. Okay, so now let's calculate that. So the standard deviation is supposed to be the square root of 128, because that's what we just found, 0.8, divided by N minus one. What is N? N is the total sample. And what is the value of that? What's the value of that? That is five. Okay, very good, Felix. Okay. In sample. So that is five. So you do five minus one, and then you find the answer. So I want you to type this into your calculator and find me the answer. Okay. First, find me the answer in four decimals. Find me the answer in four decimals before you find it in two decimals. Okay, Benjamin, your answer is wrong. It's your final, yeah, correct. Marian, correct. Kwaju, correct. Um, Kelvin, correct. Grace, Grace, your answer is wrong. Dorcas, correct. Esther, correct. Amma, correct. Deborah, correct. Okay. So do that correctly. Make sure you are in dating environment where we are. We are dating our brain. You got to do that. Okay. Ali, that was correct answer. Mary, correct. Vincent, correct. Rachel. Hughes, Matilda. Okay. When you do that, you're supposed to get 5.67. 5.67. That is the answer okay, that you eventually get after getting it in two decimals, getting it in four decimals and bringing it in two decimals. Okay, now we've gotten it, we can calculate the test statistic. How do you calculate it? The formula says T equals to D bar over the standard deviation over the square root of n. What is d bar? d bar, if you can remember, we calculated that already. What is d bar? 4.2, okay. 
So that is 4.2. Divided by the standard deviation, which we just found right now, and that is 5.67. And that 5.67 alone is divided by the square root of n, which is 5. So do this final one and tell me your answer for the T statistic. The answer for the T stars. Let me get to some answer. Correct to T decimal places. Beautiful answer from Park of Modeling, Vincent. Della. Della, your answer is wrong. Ama. Marian, your answer is wrong. Kojo, Afifa, all of them are correct. Jasmine is correct. Phoebe is correct. Bright, Samuel, already. Okay. So that is 1.66. That's the answer. This is a test statistic. This is a test statistic. Check the next step. The next step is to also find a critical value. The critical value is called the tabulated. The tabulated value. The tabulated value. I'm moving slightly fast. The tabulated value. And this tabulated value is given by T subscript alpha comma N minus one. So that means you have to use the table. What is alpha? Please note this down. Whenever alpha is not given, like here, whenever alpha is not given, it is 5%. There are three kinds of alpha that we normally use in the world. The first is 1%. The second is 5%. And the last one is 10%. What is alpha? Alpha is a actual, alpha is a level of significance. Alpha is a level of significance. It is expected error in a research. It is an error you are allowed to make in a research. It is an error you are allowed to make in a research. The error you actually make is a p-value. The error you are expected to make is an alpha. The error you actually make is a p-value. Okay. And whenever alpha is not given, the default alpha is 5%. Whenever alpha is not given, the default alpha is 0.05. So the default alpha is 5%. N minus one is called the degrees of freedom. N minus one is the DF, the degrees of freedom. That is the N minus one. And that one is five minus one, which is four. So this means that you have to go to the table and go and find T. Okay. Once you find T, you now match it against the degrees of freedom of four and you get your final answer. But remember the tail we are dealing with. Please note, any time you are using equal to and not equal to, that is two tail. And any time you are using the less than, greater than, equal, half, you know, all of those other ones here, these are one tail. So the two tail is when you have the equal to and not equal to, two tail test. And then the one tail are the other ones. Okay, The one tail are the less than or equal to and all of those things. These are the one tail. So now let's go back to our degrees of freedom and then our alpha. So the T tabulated, we are going to use this value. Four, we match four against 0 0.05. Let's go to the table. Okay. This is a table. This is a table. So now look for the, oops. Look for, Look for the top part of the table is the two tail test. So you have to, because we are dealing with two tail, because we are using equal to and not equal to, you are going to look for the 0 0.05 on the top here, 0 0.05. And then on the far left, you look for the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom we are using here is four. So you are going to see where the four will meet the 0 0.052 tail. Which number is that? Where the four will meet the 0 0.05 two tail, not a one tail, two tail. What is the number, the matching number? Let's see. Felix, your answer is wrong. Samuel, correct. Tiffany, correct. Okay. Uh, Kelvin, correct. Ali, do wrong. Okay. Sarah, correct. Right. Maudlin, Grace, all of you have Fred, I have Fred, adjustment. all of you are correct. So the number for two is 2.776, that's the number, 2.776. That is the one that matches with the table. Fantastic. 
So therefore, our tabulated is what? Our tabulated is given by 2.776. Finish. What about the, the next step? The next step says compare alpha as well as as well as the p-value. Alpha was already found to be 0 0.05. What is the p-value? Well, this is how you find the p-value. Watch it. Write this down. Always use a test statistic or the calculated to find the p-value. Always use a test statistic or calculated to find the p-value. The test statistic here we found was 1.66. That's what we found. We are going to use that to find the p-value in the table. So go to the table. This is a table. We are going to look at the swimming pool of this table. Okay. So this is a table. And then you are going to search for a number closest to one point. Now look here. This is even the table itself. We are looking for a number closest, closest to 1.66. And when you look here, 1.64 is down here. Okay. 1.660 is here. 1.664 is here. All of them are possible, but the closest is 1.66. And so once you get that 1.66, you trace it up, you walk vertically up, keep walking up, keep climbing 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 up, until you get to the P values. The P values are the bold numbers here. Okay. The P values are the bold numbers. You have to choose one. Remember, one is one tail, the other is two tail. Which one should we choose? Well, this one we have been dealing with two tail. So you choose the two tail number. And that means that the p value is 0.10. Therefore, you will write that your p value is 0 0.10. Finish. So now you have your p value. You are done. So, last step, step four, is to decide. And here is a decision rule. The decision rule is that always reject the null hypothesis, reject the each naught if the calculated value is greater than or equal to the tabulated value, or if the p value is less than or equal to alpha. If the p value is less than or equal to alpha. What is our calculated? Our calculated is 1.66, that's here. What is our tabulated? Our tabulated is 2.776. So our calculated is not greater than the tabulated. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. What is our p-value? Our p-value is 10%. What is our alpha? Our alpha is 5%. Our p-value is not greater than the alpha. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Our p-value is not, our p-value is 10%, not greater than 5%, we cannot. So what is our conclusion? Our conclusion then is that if we are not rejecting the null, what was the null saying? The null was saying that the workshop is bogus. That's what the null was saying. The null was saying that there is no difference. So we conclude that, this is a practical conclusion, the workshop, is bogus. We cannot reject the null, so we keep the null. So it means that a workshop is not effective. The workshop is not effective. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you do hypothesis testing. Okay. And then now this is strange because when you look at the storyline, go and find out this reason, by the way. Go and look for the storyline. It looks like on average, it looks like the workshop was good, if you can remember. Almost everybody reduces complaint. So at least on average, it looks like the workshop was good. But then statistically speaking, we are being told that the workshop is not good. The workshop was not good after all. Why is that the case? Find out why. Find out why, okay? And then let's discuss that in the group page. Find out why, and then let's discuss that in the group page. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Okay. It's very important to repeat this point. If the test statistic is bigger than the calculated, then you will reject the null hypothesis. In our case, the test statistic is not bigger. Okay. And it's important to know that whenever the, this is called the, 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 the critical value approach, this approach I just spoke, where you compare the tabulated and the calculated.
Okay, it's called the critical value approach. That should lead to the same conclusion as the p-value approach. The p-value approach, and please check the slides very carefully. The p-value approach is when you are comparing the p-value and the alpha. And the p-value approach says that when the alpha, when the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, reject. Our p-value was 10%. It was rather more than the alpha. So that's why we cannot reject. And that conclusion should match the conclusion of the critical value approach, which is the calculator should be greater than the calculator. So you cannot use this conclusion to conclude. And then you have a different conclusion from the p-value approach. They should all lead to the same conclusion all the time. It's a question answered. Yes, please. Okay. Any other question? Lovely, lovely, lovely.